In this video, I'm gonna break down how to create this animated poster effect all in After Effects. Now this effect is broken up into two parts and two main comps inside After Effects. We've got our poster contents where all of our animation is happening. And then we've got the comp called poster effects, which contains our poster contents, this looping glued poster animation, and a bunch of other effects to emphasize that look with lots of texture and some distortions as well. So our underlying animation actually warps and contours with the glued poster ripples. And all of that is done procedurally. Now we're gonna need some assets for these elements. So what better time to mention this video sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images has over 40,000 high quality premium mockups, 360 images, and a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering, icons, illustration, patterns, textures, presets, brushes, UX and UI kits, and even more. We need some glued poster textures, and when you look at that, Yellow Images has a bunch of options. We can get this set of 60 glued poster mockups, but they've also got this option, which is much more of a kit. It comes with a bunch of high-res backgrounds, a natural lighting shadow kit, so you can put layers of shadows over your mockups like trees and window reflections, and people in motion too. So if you're pitching a poster design to a client, you've got everything you need to customize a scene and get your design approved. We also need a font for our poster. Yellow Images has a ton of fonts. I really like this very Art Nouveau looking one called Baggerich, Baggerich. And for some imagery on our poster, they've got a bunch of packs of historical illustrations that I love. This one is called Palmistry, Zodiac, and Occult Illustrations. It comes with tons of high res scanned in and separated illustrations from times long ago. They've also got some great themed ones like Creatures from the Reef with tons of awesome crustacean illustrations. And this one called Four Footed Beast, which is not just excellent, it's very funny as well. You can buy assets individually or sign up for a membership. And just for you, I begged and I pleaded with Yellow Images for a discount for my viewers. So they gave me 100 coupons that you can claim today. But these coupons are limited. So it's first come, first serve. Get your 20% off with the coupon Ben Marriott 20 Link in the description. Now this effect will work on any animation that you have underneath. And I know you want to get straight into the effect, so I'm just going to quickly run through our poster contents comp. In here we've got two text layers that are just animating in with their position property, and each one is using a shape layer as an alpha mat to make them reveal in. The lines at the top and the bottom are just animating with their scale property on the Y axis. And for this looping hand animation, that's in a pre-comp and I use six of the hand illustrations from that Yellow Images Zodiac bundle. I put them in a sequence and loop them in a way that I'm gonna show you with the poster paper texture. And to animate it appearing on out of nothing, I applied the simple choker effect and just animated the choke mat crushing the alpha channel until it completely disappeared and then pulling it right back up until it was the same width as our lines here. Now, of course, you can take a closer look at this in the project file for this project, which is available for free to download in the description. So let's go ahead and delete this poster effects comp and build it from scratch. Let's go ahead and drag our poster contents onto our new comp icon. And let's rename that poster effects because we always label our layers and our comps too. So now we've got that comp which contains our poster contents. And this will be the final comp that we'd render out of. The next thing we need to do is create our looping poster texture. So let's create a new comp and call that poster loop. I'm gonna drag in six of our poster textures now there was more in the pack, but we only need six for it to loop properly. You could loop it with more, with three or four. I wouldn't really go less than four, but I thought six is a good amount. And let's scale these down because these are huge. And let's rotate them 90 degrees as well so they fit the comp better. There, to get these to play in a sequence, let's trim them down to four frames long each. So let's zoom in and four frames here. I'm gonna put my playhead at three frames and press Alt and hit the right square bracket to trim them all to that duration. And then I'm gonna select them all from the bottom up, right click, choose keyframe assistant and sequence layers and hit okay. Now they're all in a sequence. Let's zoom out a bit, grab the end of our work area and drag that over to the one second mark. So now we can see them loop. Now this is looping nicely. We just wanna check if there's any sort of distracting elements as we watch this. There's one sort of ripple up here, which is catching my attention, which is this one. So I'm just going to drag that off screen as much as I can. So it's a bit more subtle there. I think that is working well. Now we could make this loop with expressions, but that will lead to some dropped frames. So honestly, my preferred way to loop a texture like this is to just copy and paste them and fill out the rest of this comp. It's not an elegant solution, but it gets the job done. Let's go back into our poster effects comp and drag in our poster loop. Let's recolor that so it stands out a little bit and let's set its blending mode to multiply. Now we can see our poster underneath. Now it could do with a bit more contrast. So I'm going to add the curves effect. And I just wanna make these shadows a bit darker. So I'm just gonna drag down the middle 
there, I think that's enough. Now we can't really see the shadows over our text. That's because our text is pure black and we can't get darker than that. So let's take our poster contents comp and drop its opacity to 90%. There, now we can see our paper texture affecting the layers below, which we definitely want more of. So we've got the shadows, now for the highlights. So let's duplicate our paper loop with Command or Control plus D and change its blending mode from Multiply to Screen. And there we have got way too much highlights. We only want the most extreme white areas to be visible on our poster. So let's adjust that with the curves effect. I'm actually gonna get rid of this middle point and then just drag this one all the way over until it starts to feel right. Now I want a fair bit of this white texture over our text. So I'm probably gonna lean more towards this end. There we are. And you can tweak that to your taste. If you just want the extreme highlights, you can crush this even further. Great, now it's starting to look close. And our animation is still way too smooth and clean. So let's start warping and messing with that with some distortion. So let's create a new adjustment layer with Control plus Alt plus Y. Let's drag that on top of our poster contents and call that effects. Now you could add all of these effects straight onto your poster contents layer, but I prefer to do it on an adjustment layer. That way it's just easier to swap footage in and out underneath and this will affect everything below it. And the first effect we're gonna apply is Turbulent Displace. The surface of this wall would be a little bit uneven. It wouldn't be completely flat. So Turbulent Displace adds a slight warp. Slight warp. This warp is way too much. So let's turn down the size to maybe 30 and the amount really low, maybe to about three. Now if we flick that on and off, you can see that's very subtle, but I think it works. And to animate this warping, we can do that by opening up evolution options, finding random seed. And if we hold alt or option and click the stopwatch, it'll open up our expression window. And we can add the simple expression time asterisk four. And what that does is it changes the random seed value, which determines how it's warping every few frames. So now our text is slightly boiling, slightly warping every few frames. And we're trying to replicate this sort of being a stop motion animation where a new poster is being shown on screen every few frames. And this helps with that. But we want to exaggerate that more. Because if you were to take hundreds of photographs of this poster and line them up, they wouldn't all line up exactly. There'd be a bit of shifting, a bit of misregistration. So we're gonna mimic that by adding the effect transform. Now when you add transform, we get our familiar transform properties, position, scale, rotation, over here in our effects control panel. And we are going to add a wiggle expression to its position. So let's again, alt option click the stopwatch and let's just type in wiggle and then in brackets type in six comma 1.5. And what that's gonna do is it's going to wiggle, sort of move randomly in position this layer six times a second, the frequency, and the amplitude is 1.5, so 1.5 pixels. So it's gonna shift ever so slightly six times a second. Let's take a look at that. And this is very subtle, but you can see it's just slightly drifting every few frames. Now you can tweak the values to get a wiggle that works for you, but I like to keep it very subtle because as I say, too much wiggle makes your brain soft in the middle. Let's close these effects as well to make more room because the next effect we're gonna apply is posterized time. Now posterized time will artificially decrease the frame rate. The moment it's playing back at 24 frames per second, which is very smooth, and we want to lower that to 12, or I think even six, which we're going to do for this animation. Now this makes it much less smooth. And this might be too much, too slow for people who are used to gaming at the highest possible frame rate, and this just seems like it's lagging. But if you were to animate something in stop motion, like we were trying to replicate this. A higher frame rate might not be possible because it would just take too much time and resources. And you can increase this to eight, 10, 12 frames per second, and it would still look good. But six frames per second means that it is in sync with our looping textures, which change every four frames. So our poster design, our position, our animation only changes when our looping paper does. Now, the very last thing to do is to create that procedural distortion of our poster layer. Where we have these ripples, I want our animation to warp as if it's bending around the paper. And we're gonna do that by using a displacement map. What a displacement map does is displace or distort a layer based on information in another layer. And we're gonna use our looping poster layer as that displacement map and use its luminance values, essentially its lightness or its brightness to warp our poster design. So first let's create our map. And we can do that by just duplicating our poster loop that we have here. I'm gonna rename this poster loop displacement map. And let's change its blending mode from screen to normal so we can get a better look of what we're doing. Now this isn't too bad because we've already got this curves effect doing a lot of work on it. But what we really want is even amount of black and white and some gray in the middle because gray, a very perfect middle gray will leave our layer unaffected, but white and black areas will affect our layer the most. So let's just adjust our curves 
a little bit. Let's pull the whites out so it's very bright white here, very dark, and we are aiming for around a middle gray in the middle. It doesn't matter if it's not exact, we can always adjust these later, but I think that's looking pretty good. There, and we can hide this layer because we don't really want to see that. We just need After Effects to know that it's there and it can look at it behind the scenes. So in our effects layer, let's add the effect displacement map and let's drag that above our turbulent displace layer. So it's at the very top. And at the moment it's using itself as a displacement map. So it's looking very strange. And let's go ahead and change the displacement map layer from layer four to layer one, our displacement map. And there we go. Now we also want to change it from source to effects and mask because we want it to take notice of that curves effect we've applied. There we are. Now we can see there's some real distortion happening. Let's zoom in. The first thing I can notice is that it's very fuzzy around the edges, but we are getting some nice warping around here with the sort of peaks and valleys of our poster ripples. But this fuzziness is because of this too much black and white values and not enough grays in our displacement map. So let's make that visible again. And to reduce that contrast, I'm just going to spread these points in our curves out a little bit. So that's a bit more gradual. There, that is looking much better. Now back into our displacement map setting. We have two settings, it's horizontal displacement and it's vertical displacement. At the moment, it's looking at the red and green channel. Let's just change this to luminance. Now this won't really matter for us because our layer is black and white, but if you're using a colored displacement map, you might want to take note of that. And let's change both of these values to zero as well for the max horizontal and vertical displacement. Now for horizontal displacement, I'm just gonna drag this up so we can see what's happening. So what it's doing is pushing the black areas of our displacement map 11 pixels to the right and the white areas 11 pixels to the left. And for the gray, it's not doing anything at all. So we get these nice curves into our dark and light areas. Now 11 is far too far. Let's nudge that down to something that feels nice. I think two might be fine. Or minus two if we want to go the other direction. And let's put the vertical displacement at minus two as well. Now let's see how that looks. That is looking pretty good. You can definitely see around a few of these areas, it is really warping and looking relatively natural to how the lighting would affect on the poster. There, we have got our animated poster effect. And because we've set this up all procedurally, we can drag any animation. And as long as it's below those adjustment layers and our paper textures, it will do all of that animation and warping for us. There's nothing more that we have to do. So this is really easy to replicate once you've taken the time to set this up. So please go ahead and download this project file for free in the description. I'm afraid I can't include the paper textures, but you can see all of the effects that I've used. You can tinker with those. And I would love to see how you apply these techniques to your own projects. Thanks again to Yellow Images for sponsoring this video. Remember to get that discount down in the description. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.